Ooh, dark chocolate biscuits. Helly. Welcome back. Last week was the season one finale of the in select committee uh, investigation into the Capitol attack on January 6th. This was number eight, and it was in prime time. There will be more hearings, as announced by Liz Cheney, um, uh, coming in September. So for the August recess, the committee has a lot to work on, including what the fuck is going on at Secret Service? <laughs> Am I right? <clears throat> That's another uh, brace for it for another time. This hearing focused on the inaction, or uh, if you really think about it, the opposite action of what a president would do and what someone who would be attempting a coup would do, uh, which is looking, um, overseeing the ground forces, uh, keeping the troops motivated, um, sending uh, uh, orders, things like that. And it's very interesting that Trump did this all in a small dining room. He was never once in the Situation Room or in the Oval Office or in the Small Oval because that would be where a president would be, not someone that's attempting an insurrection. So the committee looked at the 187 minutes. This was from when Trump got off the ellipse to uh, his speech to when he posted the video saying, we love you, uh, go home, your patriots, uh, unceremoniously stolen election, all lies. And if you think he's giving up, it was actually uh, last week that Trump called the uh, Wisconsin Speaker of the House of the Republican Legislature to try to decertify the election results of 2020 after he found out that they are not allowing drop-off boxes this year's election, which were a big part of Wisconsin's election. So if I was in Wisconsin, I would be in jail right now because I uh, had my dad turn in my ballot at a drop box. Fun, right? Uh, these, uh, this hearing was led by... Um, Two service officers, uh, um, both uh, Adam Kinzinger and Elaine Loria. Elaine Loria is a 20-year Navy veteran, um, and Kinzinger, I believe, was um, Air Force or military or Marine. You know, one of the other branches of our of our uh, air of our what, armed services. Yeah, armed services. We're gonna say that. And it was uh, it was meant to be prime time. It was both video and uh, there was also uh, live testimony. Live testimony came from two big time uh, Trump supporters helped with his reelection campaign. We have on one side uh, Sarah Matthews, who is the deputy to the press secretary uh, at the time, which was Kaylee McEnany. And Matthew Pottinger, a longtime Trump loyalist who was the deputy to the national security um, in the White House, and that was the highest office that actually signed a resignation. Matthew Pottinger uh, resigned that night. He left the morning of, in January 7th, and um, he, saw, he put in his resignation as soon as he saw the Mike Pence tweet or at 4.22, Trump tweeted, Mike Pence did not have the courage. Which, in this um, this day and age, a president with that many followers sending out a tweet that his uh, um, people are listening to him at his beck and call is the equivalent of sending out military codes to your ground troops. They were troop orders. So if you say, hey, um, you know what, I really don't agree with the Justice Department and you have a lot of pull and influence and people that are armed, uh, yeah, you can lead an army, no, <laughs> really, when you think about it. Um, in the 187 minutes, uh, one thing that I thought was very interesting is there was no photos taken when the White House photographer came into the dining room, which is where um, Trump was located. He said, and I quote, no photos, which for the man who is one of the biggest narcissists of our, of our generation, 
not asking for photos um, is very significant. There was a photo taken of him when he got back from the ellipse, and then there was a photo taken of him when he leaves the dining room and he's heading to the residency. Both in a giant overcoat, the same one that he wore on the speech. When he left the ellipse, now there's been uh, back and forth testimony uh, from Cassidy Hutchinson, who was a um, the aide uh, to uh, chief um, deputy chief of. See, I should really know these names by now. Um, but she was on Mark and Meadows' uh, side because uh, she was his uh, deputy chief of staff. Whoo, got it. No high fives. She said that there was an incident when uh, the Trump uh, Secret Service uh, detail um, of the motorcade, Trump wanted to go to the Capitol and there was an altercation, a very heated argument. This has now been corroborated by uh, several witnesses. And when Trump, we found out when Trump got back, the Secret Service waited for 45 minutes to roughly an hour to see if Trump was going to the Capitol. No one else knew that. Uh, but logs for both uh, the White House uh, presidential diary of what the president did that day and the call logs are all missing in that key 187 minutes. So this wasn't Trump not doing anything. This was him uh, uh, deliberately um, taking no action because what was happening... Well, I don't know why I did the rock on sign. Um, taking no action because what was happening was what he wanted. Uh, so chew on that for a bit. <laughs> That's stale. And yeah, we saw um, video testimony. We saw that everyone in the White House was pleading for the president to say something, to get onto live TV, which he could have because it was a 60-second walk to get to the press secretary um, uh, press briefing room where there are cameras live 24-7 to assemble the press uh, corps, that takes about 20 minutes. So in 20 minutes, there could have been a press conference and Trump could have denounced the violence right then and there. But he didn't. Uh, because again, this is, this is what he had planned for. It didn't work with the fake electors. It didn't work with him trying to uh, hustle uh, state legislatures. It didn't work with him um, trying to hamstring the DOJ Justice Department. So the very last thing he had in his arsenal was his army, Trump's army, the MAGA patriots that have followed him for the last four and a half years that are now pretty much uh, following a cult. They, these, this is what you would see when someone's brainwashed, which is weird. Uh, what I'm looking at right now is the American fat flag because of the wind across has been all um, mangled. So it's very telling and, uh, and scary because really what the hearing showed is what will he do again if he gets into office? Like there are some scary scenarios and we're going to go to Corey to find out one of the more um, telling ones. Corey? It's... It, 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 it's so scary to think. But, um, really, if you, if you, if you, if you look at this, if you want a real nightmare scenario, now history shows that the people that have, the party that has control of the office, it is a referendum that they're a party is going to lose representatives and this has happened for several years there's only like two occurrences one was during the clinton administration another during george w bush but if the republicans get the house of representatives get a majority of that and get a majority of the senate they could potentially impeach biden now when you and it, it don't say that I'm crazy because Marjorie Taylor Greene. On day I have one, introduced House Resolution 7. Of impeachment this, because these are articles she said of impeachment. He was on illegitimate. President Biden. 
Uh, that's a terrible Georgian power. accent. But I mean, like, they, they could impeach Biden, throw out Harris, and then enough of these people that get into key legislative places start decertifying the election and say, we now installed the rightful right president who should have been there from the beginning. The Trump could be in office in 2022? And oh, we're going to cheer God, on no. our brave Wow, I'm going to have a heart attack at a young age, aren't I? Uh, so, yeah, there was um, uh, the, the, the more kind of like heart-wrenching uh, evidence that we saw was they had radio conversations um all a lot that was going on of the vice president's detail Building holes. Are there door up? if we're moving we need to move now Happy. if we lose uh any more time we may have we may lose the ability to to leave so if we're going to leave we need to do it now they've gained access to the second floor and i've got public about five feet from me down here below they are on the second floor Moving in now, we may want to consider getting out and leaving now. Copy. Will we encounter the people once we make our way? Secret Service saying goodbye to their families, to their loved ones. Uh, people screaming, um, mass chaos. And if Trump, think about this, if Trump went to the Capitol with his Secret Service detail, would it have been Secret Service? Secret Service? President versus Vice President? Think about this, in Arizona right now, they are actually stumping for opposing candidates. So maybe that uh, that loyal bond has been uh, calcified, broken, and rotted. But I guess that's what happens when, you're, <laughs> when your dear friend and uh, a loyal leader sends an angry mob to hang you on the spot if they find you. It is scary to think that there are 120 election deniers that have been, that have won their Republican primaries. Um, people that are vowing to decertify election results, uh, to employ poll, uh, partisan poll watchers, to make sure that the legislature are the ones that decide the president if they don't like the results that the people chose. These are doomsday scenarios and they are all happening live right now. So stay focused, stay diligent, and brace for it. Liz Cheney ended with this. Doors have opened, new subpoenas have been issued, and the dam has begun to break. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like this, uh, you can uh, share it. Uh, I don't know how often I'm going to be doing these types of videos, but I enjoy doing them. And right now, it's time for a dark chocolate biscuit. Oh, I gotta, it's one of those where I gotta open the box. <laughs> Really good. Really good. Ooh, serving size is two. That means I get another one.